Hi, I'm Gina, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to use Quiver Visual Functions. As you may know, the building blocks of Quiver are its cards. And Visual Functions give you the ability to package up a series of cards that do some sort of transformation or calculation into a function that you can then reuse either in the same Quiver or in other Quivers. This gives teams the ability to share complicated pieces of logic without having to repeat the work or do it from scratch. Let's get started. Today, we're going to be focusing on the entrances object type in our ontology. Every instance of the entrance object type corresponds to a guest entering and then exiting the theme park. Now, in our fictional world, we're assuming that every time the guest exits a theme park, maybe they tap a button, maybe they hit some sort of rating to show how satisfied they are with this visit to the park or this particular entrance. So this rating is gonna be on a scale from one to 10, and that is going to be the basis for us computing our net promoter score. So we put together an animation to help you understand what the net promoter score is and how it's calculated. You start with respondents, they submit scores on a scale from one to 10. So we have our promoters who are nine or 10 and the detractors that are six and below. We calculate the percent promoters, calculate the percent detractors, and then subtract the percent detractors from the percent promoters. People who rated either a seven or an eight aren't counted as either promoters or detractors. The net promoter score is a score to measure customer loyalty and satisfaction. So as you can imagine, this is a useful metric, but it does take a couple of steps to compute. And that's why we're going to be walking you through how to make it easier using a Quiver visual function. From wherever you are on the platform, you can hit Control J and search for Quiver. So we're gonna open up Quiver, hit New Analysis, and give it a name. Now save it somewhere that you are allowed to save your work. And I will be saving it in my learning project. So hit save. So here we are in Quiver and we're going to start by adding data to the analysis. So you're gonna hit add data to analysis. And we're going to be adding the entrances object type. So we're gonna add the whole object set. So now we've added all of the entrances and let's switch over to the graph view because that will be more conducive to the work that we're doing here. So here, this is our base object set, no modifications yet. The first thing that we're going to do is create an object set that is derived from entrances, which is going to be our promoters. So from here, we're gonna hit filter, go to filter object set, and before we do anything, we're going to give this a name because if you don't name your variables in Quipper, things can get confusing. So we're going to call this promoters. So we're going to be starting with entrances and we're going to be filtering for where rating is greater than or equal to nine. And those are our promoters. Next up, we're going to identify our detractors. So starting again from the base object set, you're gonna hit filter and then we'll hit filter object set. And that is going to make us another object set. So give this one a name. We're going to call this one detractors. And so we're going to add a filter and we're going to filter for where rating is less than or equal to six. And those are our detractors. So now we have to calculate the percentage of detractors and the percentage of promoters. So note that this is going to be a percentage out of all the respondents. So we're going to go to search cards and search for numeric aggregation. So you're gonna hit numeric aggregation and you know that you have the right one if it takes an object set and produces a number. Before we do anything, let's give this one a name. So we'll call this one total respondents. And the object set that we're gonna be counting up is entrances, just our base object set. So we have 55,000 respondents, pretty good. And next up, we're going to tally up the detractors and the promoters. So we're gonna search cards once more, go for numeric aggregation, same one that we used last time. And we're going to call this one count of promoters. The object set that we're counting up is going to be promoters. 
and the metric is count. Next up, we're going to do this one more time. So numeric aggregation, and we'll call this one count of detractors. And for this object set, we'll be starting with detractors and counting them up. Now let's move things around a little bit just to represent the flow of the logic better. So we have entrances, we take the detractors, we take the promoters, we total up all the entrances, then we derive the count of promoters and the count of detractors. So next up, we're going to calculate our net promoter score. So to do this, you're gonna to go to search cards and you're going to search for numeric formula. Now there's a couple of options here. So you know that you have the right one if it takes a number and produces a number. So we're gonna click on that one and we're going to title this one, calculate NPS. And now we're going to go ahead and write our formula. So first we're going to calculate the count of promoters. So to do this, I'm gonna start by typing my parentheses. And then when I type a dollar sign, note that I get references to the existing cards that I have in my quiver. So we can see total respondents, count of promoters, count of detractors, all of which you saw me calculate. So we'll click on count of promoters and be defining that by, and we'll click dollar sign again, total respondents, and from that, we will be subtracting the percent of detractors. So type a dollar sign, select count of detractors, divided by, type another dollar sign, and we have our total respondents. And now we'll hit update. So now we have a fraction, but the net promoter score tends to be expressed as a number between negative 100 and positive 100. It's not a percentage, but still, in order for it to be on the right scale, we'll need to multiply it by 100. And then we'll update. So that's gonna give us an NPS score of about 10, which is not great. Probably means we need a little bit of investment in our customer satisfaction in our theme park. If we wanna take care of some rounding, we can hit display. And in format, if you hit the cog, it lets us configure the format using visual formatting. And we can change maximum significant digits to one. That's all we need here. That concludes our calculation of the net promoter score. Now we're gonna create a visual function for it. Let's move this around so you can see better what's happening. So to create a visual function, you're gonna to go to functions in the sidebar, create new function, and we're going to give this a name. We'll call it Tina's net promoter score calculator. Now first, what's our output? Well, our output is going to be this final card where we calculate the NPS score. So you're going to select your output and note that you have the option to select any of the cards that are in your quiver. So if you search for calculate, we will have the right card. And so that's going to be our output. Now our input, having a variable input gives us or our teammates the ability to change the object set that is the root of all this so that we can use this calculation on other starting object sets. So for the input, make sure you select the base object set, so the root of all of this. So search for entrances. And there we have our inputs and our outputs. So now we're essentially done. You're gonna hit publish. And now you have your function. So I'm gonna exit the function. And now once I've created my visual function, let's go over how I can use it. So we're gonna to go to search cards and search for visual function metric. And you know it's the right one if it takes any of these four object types and produces a number. And you're gonna click add. And now it's gonna give us option. So it's going to show you whatever visual functions of this specific type as then takes one of those four inputs and produces a number, it's going to show you any visual functions of that type that are available. So here you can see mine that I just made and I'll add it. And so now I have to give this an input. So entrances, I'll just use the entrances variable that I have in my analysis right now. But keep in mind, 
you could use any sort of subset of entrances that you want. So for entrances, I'll just use entrances. And there we go. It just computes it. So now we've created a visual function so that we can reuse this and our colleagues can reuse this. And everybody can save a little bit of time and also reduce the risk of error that we get when we do this manually and repetitively. So this concludes our introduction to visual functions. Thanks for watching and we hope you found it helpful. Be sure to let us know in the comments which tutorials you want to see next.